Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about the War on Cheaters featured arena compensation and a bit more generically arenas themselves because I do think, you know, changes are coming. Arenas in general yet again are not in a great place and that is largely due to the fact that, you know, Kabam released seven stars and perhaps not necessarily just the fact that the seven stars are a thing, more specifically because featured paragon crystals are a thing so every new champion is available as a seven star right if we didn't have the featured paragon crystals and you know if we just got some random seven stars added here and there and we wouldn't be convinced that every new champion is attainable as a seven star you know the six star arenas would be looking a lot better than they are right now however let's take it step by step so in our effort of continued reasonable transparency on the war against cheaters we wanted to communicate that continuous monitoring of the arenas has led to many account bans in september and october as a result of the following list of champions were sent out to the accounts who would have earned the character if it weren't for the dirty nasty terrible cheaters and i'm okay with that Okay, so Vox was 47 players and Gladiator 43 players. You can see that the featured champions kind of like pick up the count quite significantly. Werewolf by Night 43 players and Morbius 75 players affected. And thus we stand here. You can see that some of the arenas like Cersei and Longshot is only a handful of cheaters, but it's primarily the new champions coming to the game that attract these cheaters. At the same time, the problem at the moment, even though the numbers are as big as they are, and, and here is the uncertain thing. Because they say like 47 players, 43 players affected, and I saw that a lot of people kind of like uh, added these numbers and kind of went away with that is how many arena cheaters we had, but that might not necessarily be even true. What we know for a fact is that at the very least, there were 75 players banned because Kabam might not have banned, you know, people that modded the Vox arena until the Morbius arena or until at some point here. So it's impossible to say for sure exactly how many people who were arena modding that did end up getting banned. We know for a fact that, you know, it was at least 75 people that got these bans and we have this amount of players that received these champions, which is still, you know, an important thing to keep track of, regardless whether these numbers are big or small, and that is kind of like the key here. Even if it's two, three, five, ten players per arena, it's super important that Kabam does the checks and makes these posts, just so that other players know that they are doing something, number one, that makes it more encouraging for people to actually go and try and do these things. They're not thinking that, you know, it's gonna be full with cheaters. Number two, this in itself, post like this in itself, works as a huge deterrent to some people who are thinking, you know, of maybe doing the cheating themselves. This is just kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like public executions, I suppose. Uh, but just want to point out that it definitely has to keep happening, regardless of the numbers and regardless of the state of greens. That said, I do think that overall situation in arenas is definitely significantly better. There are no kind of like insane cutoff. The cutoffs in like both rounds for Kushala, which is like a brand new, super hype featured champion, was around like 100 million, 100 million. And that has been the case for pretty much a uh, vast majority of the more recent uh, featured champions. Werewolf by Night went kind of high, but you know, the champion, the arena grind in itself, like it, it's definitely doable for larger accounts it doesn't require any more any units it doesn't even require like a full commitment for instance when i was grinding for kushala i effectively finished my grinding like two days and then i kind of did like half a round on day three and i was still you know well above the target i finished like 50th place so arena is at the moment nowhere near intense as it used to be which is not necessarily a good thing obviously from kabam standpoint and it's not necessarily a good thing from players. Yes, of course, as players, we currently think that uh, it's great that we don't need to have super high cutoffs. But that is a side effect, I think. And that is a side effect of the fact that people don't really care about six stars that, more, that much and the arenas themselves, which indicates that it is time for sand star rings. That's what it truly really means. 
Because obviously, you know, it, it kind of sucks to grind for a champion for three days and then seeing like a teammate or a friend or whoever pop like five crystals, take the risk and get the seven star version of a champion that you're trying to earn as a six star. So, you know, they effectively just kind of like test their luck and all your work kind of seems significantly meaningless. As an additional point, I know a ton of people who are just, you know, kind of largely refusing to rank up the new six stars. And I am hesitant myself. I'm not saying I'm not going to be ranking up the new six stars at all or ever, but I'm definitely thinking very, very, very long and hard before I take any six star to rank five these days. And it primarily just happens with the champions who don't exist as seven stars. Like my Korg, I wanted to rank five my Korg for ages, but I had a seven star Korg and I was just waiting to dupe him because I wanted to rank up the seven star. I have a Domino, and my Domino is still 6 star rank 4 and I'm duped 7 star at the moment. And I'm just super hesitant to rank up my Domino because of that exact reason. If as soon as I do my Domino as 7 star, I would much, much, much rather rank that up. And, you know, all the new champions kind of suffer from the same thing because they're added to the Titan Crystals frequently. They're in Paragon Crystals in case, you know, anybody does grab a bunch of those. And... Uh, Sooner or later, you have that feeling that you will get your hands on those champions. You might need to wait a bit, but investing in a six star and then reinvesting in a seven star at this point in the game is kind of the worst uh, because both of those ranks really still matter. Like, there will be a time when it won't seem such a big deal to rank up a random six star, just like right now. You don't really think much about taking a random five star to rank five if you feel like it for a random level up, provided you have the ice on gold. But a catalyst cost for it is not, you know, super significant at the very least. All that being said, I do think that this time around, sooner rather than later, we need to see the seven star arenas. Because the game transition to the seven stars is happening very, very fast. If you're looking at the biggest accounts in the Bali runs right now, you can see that the vast majority of the champions in their decks is already, are already seven stars. That in itself means that whales, for instance, aren't invested in arenas, which, you know, they often were still, even if they had to refresh a lot. And yeah, we just need to keep this thing going. We need to get the arenas updated. I'm not even going to talk about the two-day arenas, which are still like tier one alpha <laughs> or some crap like that. But uh, the main and most important points obviously are the seven-star arenas, the featured champion arenas. And I truly do hope that early in 2023, we see that change. We cannot, you know, go for another like half a year where arenas are well, significantly less meaningful from the top game perspective than they should be. And I'm saying that as somebody who doesn't particularly enjoy grinding arenas, it's just not having an option at all is hard. And obviously, as soon as seven star arenas are going to become a thing, huge, huge cutoffs are also going to become a thing because, you know, Kabama isn't going to let us have like 300 seven stars. It's going to go, probably go back to like 100 or something like that. And then yet again, all of these Kabam efforts in catching the cheaters are going to be ever so more important because we haven't had that in many, many years. We haven't had a fair arena with a small amount of spots for the top reward that's not filled with modders and cheaters. Because when six star arenas became a thing, very quickly, they were overtaken to a point where 80%, so about 80, 70% uh, percent of the top spot rewards, six stars, were these modders. And the cutoffs, you know, just skyrocketed. And it became borderline impossible to compete. And that was when Kabam didn't track these modders. Now, them doing so, I kind of feel more optimistic about the future. Obviously, it would be a situation where you don't grind for every new champion or, you know, you'd go crazy, but where you would at least have it somewhat decent of a chance, you know, spend some units on refreshes and to kind of like dedicate yourself to a grind to actually earn a seven stars if you want. Let me know what you guys think of this entire situation. Where do you think arenas are currently? What do you think about Kabam's efforts in battling the cheaters and everything else? 
and I'm going to catch you guys later. Bye bye. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about